What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another video for you guys and in this installment of Celebrating Disney going on the live action side of things Oh man, I'm going into thin ice on this one. Dangerous territories because I am tackling perhaps Disney's most controversial release of all time. And if you're a Disney buff like me, you probably know what it is. It is Song of the South. Before I go any further, I will leave a link to a playlist in the description down below of all the movies I've tackled in my Celebrating Disney so far, animated, live action, all of the Disney films so far. So Song of the South, here we go. This was released in 1946. It was one of the first live action Disney films. It also has some animated segments mixed in there as well. Uh, the film was based on a series of short stories and in the film Song of the South, Uncle Remus draws upon his tales of Br'er Rabbit to help little Johnny deal with his confusion over his parents' separation as well as his new life on the plantation. Song of the South. Uh, what can I say about this film? Well, being a controversial Disney film, there's a lot to dive into with this film. When it was first released in 1946, it was, I think, the highest grossing film of that year. People love Disney, they were willing to go see any movie, and they saw Song of the South, and many people loved it. It was considered a classic back then. There was a little controversy over it at the time, but not in the way that it is now. A good majority of people thought the film was excellent and was a bona fide Disney classic. And the film was subsequently re-released over the years, and it even inspired a theme park ride, Splash Mountain. The last theatrical release of this film was in 1986. 40 years after the original release. But as shifting attitudes changed about segregation and civil rights and certain stuff like that, the film started to cause more controversy, particularly in the African American communities. Uh, people were saying the film was derogatory, racist, uh, some even thought the film was promoting a uh, really bad and dated agenda for kids. I even read online there are people that accused the film of really white supremacy. I think that's a bit of a stretch personally, but there are people that believe the film is that dangerous for kids, believe it or not. And because of the controversy, uh, in recent years, Disney's more scared to tackle this film. In fact, there has not been an official whole media release of Song of the South because of recent controversies surrounding it. There never got one on VHS. Definitely not one on DVD and Blu-ray. And I have a feeling, especially under Bob Iger's reign at Disney, because he himself has admitted that he personally does not like the film and views it offensive, it's definitely not going to be released during his time as CEO. And he's currently planning to stay a CEO until 2021. So at least not in his lifetime as CEO. Maybe afterwards, who knows. But for now, it has not gotten an official release. In fact, this DVD that I got a Song of the South is not the official release of Song of the South. There's not an official release of Song of the South in the U.S. Now, Disney's okay with releasing Song of the South in other countries because other countries have not had problems that we had with slavery and stuff so they're okay with releasing it over there because it's viewed as an offensive over there but here oh we we can't watch movies that deal with repercussions of our past oh no and then again this is not the best quality dvd either this is like VHS level bad, there's muted colors, there's like cuts in the soundtrack to where things are blipped out and stuff because of how, and there's like a lot of noise and stuff. But 
Best I can do right now, being from America, don't have an official release. This is the best I can get of Song of the South. Because now I'm a hardcore Disney fan. I've been intrigued by this film for many, many years. And I had some of the Disney sing-along tapes as a kid, and it had footage from Song of the South in it. And I was like, oh, this looks like an interesting movie. I didn't know about the controversy until years later. So this is the second time I have seen Song of the South. And I'm going to have to say some things. You might not agree with these things. I can totally see why some people don't like this film. But as far as the movie being racist, I do think it's a bit of a stretch, honestly. Now, granted... This is a dated film. I'm not going to lie. There are some dated aspects of this film. For one, this movie does not do a good job of addressing the real meat of the problems of the Deep South during the Civil War era. In fact, the film doesn't really address what era it truly was. Uh, for some people, the film is set during the Civil War and the black characters are slaves. And that's what a lot of black people are upset about. But others have argued that the film is set post-Civil War in the Reconstruction era where all the slaves are free, but they're just hanging around the plantation because they don't have much to live by. Uh, seeing the film twice, I'm going to have to say it's Reconstruction because, for one, uh, the black characters are not working for the white people on the plantation. They just live around the plantation. They're not being treated bad and they're not being forced into labor. You see these characters go off working because they're sharecroppers and a lot of them are farmers. And so they do that work. But there's no harsh treatment or you, they're not working under forced labor by the plantation because they're not working for the plantation. And that's just how I see it. That's how I've seen it after watching it both times. But like I said, this film is very dated because there's dated slang, especially from the black characters, which is considered very stereotypical nowadays. So I guess I can see that turning off a lot of modern audiences. Also, in one of the cartoon sequences, there's a character used to trap Br'er Rabbit called a Tar Baby, which... Honestly, if I was a black kid and I heard there was a character called Tar Baby, I don't know what I'd think of that personally. That would probably rub me off the wrong way. But then again, I'm not a black kid. I don't know what a lot of black people feel about that, but I can see some not liking that phrase, to be honest. But other than that, Pink Song of the a great movie. Yeah. I actually really enjoyed this film. There's more positives to Song of the South than there is bad. And I think going into the positives, one of them has to do with the main black character. That's Uncle Remus. He's played by an actor named James Basket. I think he's excellent. Yeah, there's the slang in there. Granted, that is dated. That was uh, a stereotype that was depicted in a lot of black characters in 40s cinema. But the guy is still a charming character. He is very tender-hearted. He is very sweet. He is willing to entertain children regardless of race. Our main character, Johnny, is a white boy uh, who lives on this plantation. Uh, he doesn't want to be there. There's a problem going on with you know, his parents. Which, that's not really addressed well. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I think a lot of it is racially involved. Uh, it's implied like he's... People don't like what he said in the paper. I have a feeling he is sympathetic towards the black community. And, like, his family members are against that because of the prejudices of the day. And that split the family apart. That's how... That's my personal opinion. So, anyway, so... Johnny's upset, and Uncle Remus comes in and helps patch things up and gives him life lessons along the way with the character of Br'er Rabbit along with Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear. And I think Uncle Remus is an excellent character. I think he's one, I think, 
even though he's a little dated in some aspects, I think the values of the character and what he stands for, I think, is can still be relevant, I think. Uh, the life lessons that's from the stories he tells to these children. And I think the heart of Song of the South is the fact that you have Johnny, a uh, white boy, becoming best friends with Uncle Remus, a black man. I think the heart of Song of the South, regardless of the backlash against it, is to promote racial unity. Not white supremacy. Uh, racial unity. Because Johnny, at the end of the day, does not care about the prejudices of the time. He just wants to live a happy, carefree life. He does not care about the social status or anything like that. He just enjoys the time that he has with his newfound companion. And that should be celebrated, honestly. This was kind of ahead of its time, honestly, because you know, America was had the segregation problem during the 40s. So, honestly, that's inspiring that Walt Disney was trying to show that, you know, you can make friends with different races and cultures and this was that was a bold statement to make honestly and Disney's trying to do messages like that and their modern film most recently uh, Zootopia was a great example of promoting racial unity in a film so I guess Song of the South if you think about it kind of paved the way for that film in a sense even though Disney don't want to admit it but it kind of did. I give credit for that. And also James Baskett as Uncle Remus. He won an honorary Oscar for the role of Uncle Remus. The first for a black actor. That is incredible. Somebody like James Baskett who normally would not have opportunities to be even nominated for an Oscar. He won a special award for the role of Uncle Remus. Yeah. I think you should celebrate that, Disney. I really think you should. Another thing that should be celebrated about Song of the South are the animated segments. They are amazing. Not only are the stories of Br'er Rabbit still relatable to this day, but the animation, obviously, being a Disney film, I think the animation in Song of the South is more passionate and polished than a lot of the package films Disney was making at the time and I'm currently doing in the celebrating Disney so far. It's incredible. Uh, the slapstick comedy is crazy good. Uh, I'm, I was constantly laughing throughout seeing Br'er Rabbit try to outsmart Br'er Fox and Br'er Br'er. Br it's just some very funny stuff and even my dad, who's not a crazy Disney guy by any means, he's one who thinks animation's kid stuff for the most part, even he had a ball with the animation stuff and so on and so He was laughing throughout, uh, particularly the laughing place scene. That scene is hysterically funny. And another thing that should be celebrated are the songs. I think the songs are really fantastic. Uh, they, they hired a lot of uh, black talent and Song of the South, and the singing all around from the black choir they hired on this film is phenomenal. Nobody talks about it because of the controversy, but whenever they're singing throughout the film, it is just beautiful. I, I, I got some goosebumps during some of those moments, and I think that should be celebrated. Every time I enjoy, uh, every time I hear a black chorus sing, and movies, and entertainment, it's beautiful. It really is. I enjoy that uh, when looking at their culture. It is excellent. And then, you can't go wrong. Yeah, How Do You Do is a catchy song. You probably heard him if you write, if you wrote Splash Mountain. The Laughing Place. And, of course, Zippity Doo Dah. That is one of the most happiest songs I have ever heard in my life. It's one of my personal favorite Disney songs of all time. And yet, Disney wants to hide this film and yet they have a theme park ride based on it again it don't make sense but the song is excellent i think it won the oscar for best original song it's it's catchy every time i hear it it's always stuck in my head it's just an awesome song it's very simplistic but there's a 
very universal message to it. Everything is satisfaction. Like if you live, uh, if you live a life of happiness, you'll find peace. I definitely feel more peace being a Christian, honestly. But uh, just that song is just awesome. I, I I can't believe Disney don't want to talk about it anymore. It's very sad. Uh, the performances are really good. I said James Basket as well. Uh, Bobby Driscoll was a prominent child actor who played Johnny in the film. Uh, he did some later Disney roles as well. He later went on to play Jim Hawkins in a live action version of Treasure Island. And he also voiced Peter Pan. So he did some neat stuff for Disney. The girl in this film, her name is Luana Pattern. I, she was in Fun and Fancy Free. She was the girl with the creepy puppets I reviewed last week, uh, which was pretty interesting. And she's okay in this. Another interesting trivia, Hattie McDaniel uh, was in this film as well. She was one of the servants in Gone with the Wind, and she was the first black woman to win an Oscar for Gone with the Wind, which is incredible. So it's pretty neat seeing her in two controversial films for many people. And I find it interesting also that Gone with the Wind has just about as much controversy as Song of the South and the depiction of blacks and the Civil War and the Deep South and slavery. Yet Gone with the Wind is still considered a classic and it has the pristine home media releases and has even been re-released in theaters even to this very day. Yet Disney don't do the same thing with Song of the South. And people treat it like horse crap. Honestly, I think the slavery bits in Gone with the Wind are more problematic. Because that one's more prominently focused in the Civil War, while Song of the South is Reconstruction, post-Civil War. It's a complicated subject. I don't know if I'm going to change any minds from a lot of people talking about this film, but I honestly think it is a crying shame that Disney is trying to hide this film. I am extremely against censorship. I was very devastated by the recent news of Universal pulling their thriller The Hunt due to political pressure. I think that is utterly nonsense. And I think art, art is subjective. I think you can make anything you want regardless of your beliefs. And it's all up to for the people to decide whether the film's good or not. And I think Song of the South is the same way. I think, again, it's a shame Disney does not treat this film kindly because it is a vital part of their history. James Baskett, like I said, won that honorary Oscar. Zippity Doo Dah won Best Song. It was one of the first times animation and live action was integrated on film. I think this came out a year after Three Caballeros, but... This was a step up even more in Song of the South. I mean, some shots in Song of the South rival Who Framed Roger Rabbit and even Mary Poppins. So and this kind of paved the way for those two films. So that should be celebrated. And honestly, I, I think the film promotes racial unity at the end of the day. And that's, that's what we need in movies. Uh, I don't see any white supremacist agendas in Song of the South. If it was, I wouldn't even like it. And I'm one who enjoys black people. I love black people. There was a uh, one of my previous jobs I worked with this really nice black person. He was one of the best people I've ever worked with in any job. So I have no problems with African Americans. Uh, just it's frustrating the way Disney's trying to hide this film. I don't even, I, Walt Disney, I think, would be infuriated because he he was trying to create something groundbreaking with this film. Because contrary to what some people believe, Walt Disney was not a racist. One of his prominent animators, uh, Floyd Norman, bears witness to that, a black animator. He was one of Walt Disney's closest friends. And I think Floyd, I think he worked on Song of the South. I, don't quote me on that, but I think he did. I don't think this film should be banned, that, pure and simple. Even Disney legend Whoopi Goldberg, fan of the film, black woman, and she wants it to be released. Uh, and this is what she said. 
I'm trying to find a way to get people to start having conversations about bringing some of the South back so we can talk about what it was and where it came from and why it came out. And she, a black woman, believes it should be preserved. Yes, there's flaws in the film. It's not perfect. It's dated in places. But we can't hide the past. Yes, we've made mistakes along the way as a society, especially in race relations, but we can use movies like Song of the South as a teaching tool to show the things we messed up on and the things we can improve upon. And the fact that Song of the South is trying to be hidden from history is a crying shame. So hopefully when Bob Iger retires from Disney CEO, hopefully whoever replaces him will have an open mind and he or she will properly restore the film to the glory it deserves and we get a pristine release here in the USA. Song of the South, I think, is a classic Disney film. Even with the controversies, I still think it should be a must watch for Disney fans, families, and cinephiles to a certain extent. And believe it or not, I'm actually going to give it five stars. I think you should watch this film, especially if you're a Disney fan. And on a 100 point scale, I'm going to say 96 out of 100. I might sound like a wackadoo for saying that, but I think Song of the South is an important watch. Flawed, yes, but go check it out if you can find a copy of it. And those are my thoughts on Song of the South. Ooh boy, I hope I don't get some hate on this one. <laughs> but I think it's important. It's part of, I, I, when I started the celebrating Disney series, I knew I wanted to talk about it because it is a vital part of their history, and I think more people should talk about it and share what they think about it, whether they like it or not. As with these live action reviews, which will be in between the animated stuff, I am asking for requests for any future installments in the series, and let me know down in the comments below what Disney film I should tackle next for the live action stuff and celebrating Disney. Next week will be an animated review and it'll be the package film Melody Time. So if you have seen Song of the South, what do you think of this film? Are you like me and think it's a bona fide Disney classic or you can't get past the film, the dated aspects of the film? I, mean, I can see where you're coming from, but I think at the end of the day it's all around a Disney classic. But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others' opinions. And if they're respectful, I'll share them in future comment shoutouts. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. I have some more videos planned for you soon. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!